Okay, so one of the things that we're going to want to be able to do in Jump is to create uh, transformed variables, uh, things that are new features or new variables that have been defined as a function of the features that are given to us in our data set. So as a, for instance, you might want to take, um, you know, add things together, take some sort of a nonlinear transformation like a log or something like that. Or you might want to actually do some sort of a function that aggregates over multiple samples instead of just aggregating it over a single sample. And you'll see the difference between what I mean there in a moment. But for right now, let's do the simplest possible function that we can almost imagine, which is to create an estimate for the pedal area by multiplying together the pedal length and the pedal width. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to add a new column. I've just right-clicked on the uh, open area here, uh, create a new column. It's going to open up a dialog that's going to allow me to set up, and we'll say that the pedal area, we'll name the column so it's got something meaningful. It's going to give me defaults on the data type and modeling type. In this case, numeric and continuous make perfect sense. And then when we see down here the column properties, we're going to just click on that. And the first option we'll see is the formula, which pulls up the formula dialog that we're going to use to define the computation that we're about to perform. So creating a formula here is actually really quite easy, especially if you're kind of used to doing it in Excel. Uh, to get to an area, and the length by width, we'll just click on pedal length. You see that it adds it to that area in the bottom where it's, we're building up our formula. Multiply and then pedal width. And then we'll just say OK. You can already see that they've populated the column with the data that we want, but let's just check that the formula that was created is what we expected. And then let's say OK. And you can see that at this point we've created, for every sample in our data set, we've got a new, a new variable, a new a feature, if you will, that is an estimate of the pedal area, which we got by just multiplying these two things together. And if you look at it down the columns or look at it down the data set, you can see that we've got one unique variable, one unique value for every one of the samples, which is exactly what we'd expect. Now, there's another way of thinking about formulas, which is, you know, in this case, we just sort of did a formula that went across a, a sample, or, you know, sort of a horizontal slice across the data set. The other way in which we can think about it is to do some flavor of a vertical slice, you know, say for the sake of argument that we want to create the average of the sepal length across all of the samples. And the formula builder allows us to do that. So let's go back and do the same kind of a thing, and you'll see where the difference comes in. So in this case, what we're going to do is the average sepal Oh, we can spell sepal length. We're going to do something a little bit more complicated. In fact, we're not going to just take the average sepal length. We're going to take the average sepal length, but we're going to do it for each of the individual classes. So let's actually show that that's going on. Again, we've got numeric and continuous. Pull down, get to the formula. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to use one of our statistical functions. It's a little bit more complicated than the basic arithmetic functions that we started with. Statistical. And one thing to notice here is that the statistical functions come in two different flavors, ones that have the COL at the beginning and the ones that are sort of pretty much the same but don't have that COL. The ones that don't have the COL, the ones from mean and down, what those are doing is actually exactly what we've just shown when we did our area computation. They're doing a, a, a mean across multiple features on a single sample. The column mean, the COL mean, if you will, uh, does something a little bit different. It's going to take the average across an entire column. So let's actually choose that. We're going to take the sepal length, basically the same exact thing. All I've done is just click on the sepal length in the formula builder. And if we were to stop at this point, we would actually get the average sepal length across all of the different samples of the, of the flowers, the 150 samples that we have. I want to show you something that's going to be useful to you as you move forward, though. Uh, a lot of times we don't want to get just the average across the sepal length. We know that the, we've got three different varieties or three different classes of flowers in this. And Jump allows us to integrate, uh, use that information to do something a little bit kind of sweet. I'm going to hit the comma button here, and you'll see that a new field has been brought up on the column mean function, something called by variable. And what that by variable does is it allows me to introduce a categorical variable, in this case class, which I've just clicked on, populated it here, say OK again. And going through the same process, now you see kind of a funny result. We've got the same answer for all of the flowers towards the top of the data set. And what's happened here is we've actually created the average sample length for all of the data samples that have iris setosa in that one class uh, categorical variable. And you can see that if we go down to the point where around uh, sample number 50, you can see when we shift from the one class of flower to the next class of flower, we actually get a shift in the, the average. So 
trust me on this. You can sort of do it offline and compute it to verify that this is what's going on. But what's just happened is we've created the average sepal length organized across all of the samples or computed across all of the samples where the class is equal to iris setosa. So this is something that you're going to want to be able to um, do, uh, especially as we go through the homework this week. I think that in one of these, the examples, one of the exercises that we have, uh, we'll be computing the average sales by store for a large data set of uh, um, sales records for computers in a London shop. And uh, one of the things we ask is, what is the average sales price or the average set volume, sales volume for each of the individual stores? And so you can sort of take these ideas that we've just gone through and transform them into something that gets you the answer that you need there for that particular answer.